I was never an alcoholic. I was never close to being an alcoholic, but I could definitely see it getting in the way of what I wanted out of life. Mm-hmm, right. And so, you know, it, it was something where like, I, I was still certainly on the, you know, on the highway, but I could see the off ramp. And so, <laughs> right. Um, it, it was something where I decided, you know, I had gone through that and, and everybody who drinks does the, the idea of, oh, I'm never going to drink again. And then the next weekend you're out drinking. Right. Um, and so, you know, I had said that a couple of times. And then finally there was once where I said I was going to stop drinking. And then, uh, you know, a couple days later, I had an event where I, you know, knew the people who were hosting it and like someone tossed me a beer. And I was just like, oh, you know, I'm trying not to drink. And no one respects trying not to drink. Mm-hmm. People respect when you put your foot down and you say, oh, no, I don't drink. Everyone's fine. Oh, but if you say, oh, I don't want to have any. I'm, I'm trying to drink less. Uh, you know, I've had enough tonight. Nobody respects that. And so I did have the one beer. And then I ended up having a really wonderful night. And I realized that like that beer didn't change anything. I could have had a great night without it. And that was the last beer I ever had. I'll be damned. Well, I'm glad that it wasn't wasn't to an extreme, uh, uh, you know, in so many of us addicts case. Kind of no, it, w- it was more of, uh, you know, I was I was losing time each morning. You, you know, when you're a comic, it's so easy to drink. It's sure. a lot of times the venue provides it. If the venue doesn't provide it, people after the show want to buy you a drink um, or during the show sometimes, too. And, you know, you do the math and you go, oh, if, you know, I do a show for 200 people, and you know, twenty of them want to buy me a drink. I'll die. Right. So it's it's bad, um, and it you know it comes to the point where you're pretty much drinking every day of the week. And even if it's not you know really harming me at night, I wake up the next day. I'm slower. I'm not feeling well. I'm not accomplishing things. And it's such a difficult profession already that putting a hurdle in front of you during a race doesn't make you run faster. So mm-hmm. I took the hurdles away. Oh, yeah. I mean, you stand up there with the microphone and just you. That's it. And you got to entertain. Make me laugh. Go. (laughs) It's not even that. It's, you know, performing is the easiest part of this business. The the toughest part is getting the opportunity to. Yeah. And, you know, and and being able to do the business of it and, you know, reply to emails or send emails that will never get replies and, you know, call people and and work on your social media now you know back then there wasn't such a thing but um it's a it's a business that requires you to be firing on all cylinders most of the time and so i mean there aren't a lot of jobs that you can drink at work and still do your job correctly right so why why do i think mine is one of them well and i'm sure throughout the you know there's been so many comedians that have died of addiction related issues you know some yeah. of my favorites I, I i can't imagine maybe what it's like being out there on the road i i think people don't understand the mental and emotional toll that it takes out there on the road i mean you have a family at home you leave them you know yeah jo- uh, john panette was talking about being sober once and it was it was something that really stuck with me where he said because someone asked him, I forget who was interviewing him, but the the interviewer asked, you know, why do so many comedians have an alcohol problem? And he said, well, you know, when you're at a motel in Topeka, if you have a half a bottle of Jack in you, you forget that you're at a motel in Topeka. <laughs> and it's like, it is a very lonely existence. It is a very, and it's better now that, you know, we are so connected as a society because, you know, I started doing the road when, you know, texting was really just getting going. Um, But you could still call people all the time. It was really easy. But I talked to some of these older comics and they talk about the fact that like, you know, to to get bookings, they would they would get a whole bunch of quarters and go to the payphone and like just call bookers and that to pass the time they would uh, Larry Reeb once told me he was like, yeah, we'd mall walk. I go, what is that? And he goes walking around a mall. I was like, right, aptly <laughs> named. Uh, but they would literally just try to do that to kill time during the day. Whereas now, you know, I never have a second free. And on one hand, it's more stressful. But on the other hand, it's less isolating. Is that something that early on that that isolation that you struggled with or that you saw maybe other comedians struggle with? Absolutely, I did. And, you know, and, and it wasn't just not having a way to, you know, communicate to people as much as we can now. 
it was also, it wasn't until a couple of years ago that I really put my foot down and I said, I'm always doing gigs with my friends. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you are, when something goes wrong on the road, which it always does, you know, our running joke on my last tour was, you know, like what can, what can go wrong? You know, it's, it, we always, we said, it's always something. Right. And, you know, and sometimes that's uh, the sound system is fritzing out or, or there was once where we got to a place where we had a sold out show and their POS system was down. <laughs> so they couldn't sell any beer or food. And they were like, we're going to cancel the show. I'm like, we're absolutely not learn how to take cash. Yeah. You know, like th there's an ATM around the corner. Tell people to go get cash. We're not canceling the. We're not going to lose money because you guys are going to lose money. This isn't our fault. Mm -hmm. um, and when that happened, like, yeah, it sucked at the time, but then we laughed about it the next day. And when you're touring by yourself, you don't have that. Right. So, you know, really what helped my mental health more than anything was, and at first it was, and, and even sometimes still it's, you know, you lose a little bit of money doing it because when the club books the openers, they put them up, they pay them, they, you know, et cetera. And when I book my guys, first of all, I'm not gonna pay them as little as the club would be willing to pay them, but also I have to fly them out there. I have to travel them, I have to, you know, et cetera. And so there was a gig that I did where it was a five day long gig and the opener was doing all these jokes that were just so sexist and racist and just, I never wanted to hang out with someone less than that. Right. And that was the last time I let a venue book an opener for me. And, and they were willing to let me bring an opener. It was just kind of a, re a remote place. And it, it was, I, I decided, oh, it's not financially worth it. And I'm like, no, 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 I will lose $300 to not have to talk to this person. <laughs> so, yeah. And that, that was a huge change for me.